Hi, I'm Mike Nye, retired lieutenant from Green Township Fire and EMS. With me today is Mike Cleaner, a firefighter paramedic. He's the last remaining part-time firefighter who started his career here as a volunteer for the Mac Volunteer Fire Department. When he started, he was assigned to the Monfort Heights Station on West Fork Road. In 1985, to deal with an increasing number of runs, the department began staffing its stations around the clock and all of the volunteers were transitioned to part-time employees working alongside full-time personnel. After many years of service, Mike is retiring and he's agreed to sit down and talk a little about his career and the history of the fire department. Thanks for talking to us today, Mike. What year did you join the fire department? I joined June 18, 1979. This, you this remember right down to the date. I, absolutely. I know what year it was, but uh, I don't remember the date I, itself. I, I'm going to tell you exactly what time I got sworn in, too. 1,900 hours. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Business meeting. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so what brought you to join the fire department? Well, uh, I think if I remember correctly, back in 1977, 78, the uh, Mac Fire Department had made a run on a gentleman on Jessup Road where he actually had a cardiac arrest on the roof of his house. Mm -hmm. So of course, you know, as is all the neighbors and everything else, when I had to check it out and see what's going on, walked up to the top of the street and uh, we watched Mac Fire Department bring this gentleman off the roof doing compressions and everything else. I said, you know what, that looks like it'd be a great job. That, you know, that, that's exciting. You know, look what's going on. So I decided, uh, I guess I got out of high school, of course, in May and in June, I got on as a volunteer fighter volunteer firefighter with Mac Fire Department. But you probably didn't even know at the time you were looking at history because Mac Volunteer Fire Department was one of the first paramedic volunteer departments in the area. That is, that is correct. I learned that, of course, is when, when you get on there, we were medics and, you know, and you know, of course down the road, uh, most of us that are on the department are medics and uh, it's, uh, you know, it's all probably a natural progression. Yeah, and, and you know, back then and still to this day, there's a lot of history in the fire department. So, like you said, as soon as you got on, you started hearing that history, and this history goes back to 1944. That's that's right. You know, and, 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 and you're just you're you're in the you know you're becoming a part of that history with the retirement from the, uh, a part-time position that started when you were a volunteer. Right, and, and I will say it's a very proud position. You know, that, that's one of those things that you know, as I. So I would say many times I'm very, I was very proud, continue to be very proud that I'm a Green Township firefighter. Mm -hmm. So besides, you know, that one run you remember, um, what was the fire department like back in those days in the, you know, the late 70s, early 80s? What was it like well, back then? Well, it was much different than today. Um, it was more of a social, aid, social gatherings. We would go to the firehouse and, and at that time, believe it or not, we had beer machines in the firehouse and we had you know, a few of the empty the beer machine nights after drill and things like that on Monday nights. Uh, you know, it was, it was a casual atmosphere. It wasn't the professional atmosphere we are today. And, you know, it was, it was fun. I mean, it was a place for the guys to hang out and, you know, come up there. And that's evenings. what was in it for guys back then, wasn't it? It wasn't, you know, now it, it's, it's a job. Absolutely. It's still a fun job. Absolutely. But, but it was, it, it's still a job. Right. Back then, that's what the department had for people. It was a social organization. That's right. That's right. You know, the business meetings, they made great dinners and, and, and things such as that. So that was a really, really, I mean, it was a great time with same guys my age. We got to know each other, you know, people I'd never met before. And we mm -hmm. all got together at the firehouse and became great friends and, and, and better, you know. And, and the other thing, too, was that we hit each other's back, you know, here, you know, we were we, we would take care of each other, you know, and, and that, that was that was that meant a, a lot right, back right. in the day. And so. you said earlier that some of your siblings were on the department. How many of your siblings were well, on the department? At one time, there was five of us. Um, I have my twin brother Steve, my brother Bob, other brother Don, and my one of my littler brothers Barry. So um, it, it was a it was a great ride. Uh, and, and I'll have you know that um, back in the day, of course, we had light and sirens in our cars, and that was that was a big thrill too, by the way, just so you know. <laughs> But um, during fire run, when a fire would come in, all five of us lived, of course, in the, of course, in the same house, and all five of us jumped in our different cars and drove to the firehouse, all light and siren up Jessup Road. But it was a one of those things that if we didn't go separately, we never made the truck. We would, we rarely made it anyway. But you know, but right. that that lessens our chances. Well, five but, guys yeah, in one car yeah, with all that gear. Yeah, exactly. Probably wasn't going to no, work. No, it wouldn't have happened either. But by the time we got everything switched over, hell, the scene would be or the the uh, situation had been over by that time. So. <laughs> so you brought up a good point, you know, back in the volunteer days with lights and sirens on yeah. cars. What was it like at the intersection of Chevy and Jessup when there was a fire run? Well, there was probably 
At that time, probably maybe 10 to maybe 15 cars going to that intersection mm -hmm. all about the same time in different intervals of who was closer to the firehouse or who was further away. Right. So it was, it was, it was, a, it was a pretty hectic situation, and uh, especially people didn't know which way to go and, and which way the cars were coming from at that time. Right. So, but it, right. was, it was fun. It, but it's how it was done back then. Absolutely. There was a lot less traffic back then. I, well, that's, that is true. So Mike, what was the transition from volunteer to part-time? You know, that was a that was kind of a chaotic time in the history of the fire department. What was that transition like from volunteer to part-time? For me, personally, perfect timing. Um, what was going on in my life, I got married in 1982, and we were expecting our first child. Mm -hmm. And um, and actually, uh, going to the full-time staffing, 24-hour, around-the-clock type of service, you know, we had full-timers, and we had part-timers that filled in the, the slots where you know, we didn't have enough full-timers to cover it. So what happened was, it was, an, it was I was able to, my wife was able to stay home with the kids. It was a, it was a perfect, perfect storm for us. So she was able to stay home with the kids, and I, and I actually worked two jobs. Mm -hmm. And that, that was, for me personally, it was great. But also for the department, it was also a wonderful thing for the community, the department, and everything else, where we were able to offer service on where we actually stayed the physically at the station where we didn't have to wait for first or for volunteers to get to the station to take the apparatus or the ambulance to the scene it was at that time we we slept here we did everything here we ate here we watched tv together we, we were a unit we were a team and it's, it worked out very nicely for the for the community as well i mean the community benefit from us being able to do that immediate immediate responses you know it, we hit our bumps though you know and you know it's a you know, animosities at times that happen with full-time, part-time, and, you know, but, you know, we all got through that and got over it, and it turned out to be a beautiful thing. Growing so. pains. Absolutely. It was growing pains. Absolutely. So we talked, you know, a little bit earlier about how, you know, it's it's more professional now. Absolutely. You know, it's not as much of a social organization, mm -hmm. although the guys here right. enjoy spending time together. Right. But, you know, we talked about one of the reasons that, we, you know, this department has changed from a volunteer to a part-time, full-time, 24-hour mm -hmm. day staff organization was the increase in runs. Okay. You know, over those years, you know, we're, there's probably three or four times as many runs per day That's now cool. as there were back then. You know, there's maybe 20 runs a day mm -hmm. now. Back then, amongst all the stations, there may have been six or mm -hmm. seven. How do you think the fire department has handled that increase in, in the calls for service? We've done very well by incre increasing staffing, by when we first started the staffing at each station, we hit three at the outlying stations, I believe seven at headquarters. We now have five at each one of the outlying stations, five at headquarters. They, they've broken up the, the personnel correctly the, to accommodate the, the additional runs. So it, it's, it, it's a department wide, they've addressed the needs very well. What are you gonna miss most about the fire department now that you're retiring? It's the guys. You know, you know, everyone's going to say that, yeah, it's the guys, you miss the guys. But I, I will truly say that we each, we each have each other's back. You know, you can sit and talk to a guy about a, an issue, a family issue, a, you know, hey, how do you fix this or how do you do that? Mm -hmm. You know what? Everyone always seems to have an answer or at least give, give you their opinion, but mm -hmm. you're really there for each other. And, and it's, that's, that's really the thing that's really that I'm going to really miss, you know. I, I miss the dinner, too. I mean, they'd make great food at the firehouses. We got some great cooks. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It, it's, um, and then the, even the best part, because I work mostly nights, is that dinner's ready when I get here. I kind of like that. Mm -hmm. So, but it's, <laughs> a, it's, it's a wonderful, the guys are great. I mean, I, I really say that. And, you know, I, I hope that I, I'm not a stranger here, and hopefully I get to see people occasionally. Mm -hmm. Of course, not on runs and every day like we see them. But, mm -hmm. so, but um, it, it's, it's more so everything else is the guys. So, Mike, you remember when you were one of the young guys around the fire department, and you young guys would be talking about the old guys. Guess well, what? Well, <laughs> very true, How's Mike. It feel? Very true, Mike. I am the old guy. Um, I believe right now I am. I am the oldest. I'll be 60 on the day I retire. Um, I had the most time in, which is almost 41 years. I'll be a little bit shy. It's actually going to be, if you want the, the exact number, I do have that for you. It's 40 years and 333 days on the day I retire. So I got that down. <laughs> I know exactly what <laughs> that is. To the second. To the second. But no, it, it's a, you know, I am the guy. You know, I could be their grand, I could be a lot of these guys' grandfather. Mm -hmm. You know, you think about it. If we got started quickly and I, right. very, I could very well be their grandpa. Yeah. So I am the old guy. But you're okay with that. Yeah, you know, like they say, you know, there's, you know when it's time. 
So, you know, talking about that, you know, talking about that, do you think that the younger guys, the young guys these days, have a grasp of the history of this department and, and what it took to get this department where it is now? To be honest with you, no. I, I don't think they really understand where we came and where we've gone. I, I just don't think that is, I don't think they got it, you know? But, you know, they get around here for a while, then they finally do. They'll, they'll, they'll learn do the here, history here, and here. then they'll make their own history. That's right, absolutely. So yeah, it's a, it's, it, believe me, it's a, I'm proud of that history too. I will say that, it's, it's just one of those things that's a. So do you have any memories of your time on the fire department that stand out just above the rest? Um, you know, this sounds kind, of, sounds kind of a little bit morbid to a certain point, but you know, I've had seven fatality fires. And some of them were doubles and triples, don't get me wrong. But you know, the, those are the things that probably stand out the most in your mind, you know, where you actually lost a, a citizen of Green Township that was, was involved in a fire. Um, of course, fires, you know, that's what uh, I think us firefighters live for is, is fires um, because we. You know, that, that's, what, you know that, that's the thrill, I guess, let me say it that way, not, you know, how else to say it, but I mean, it, you know, you, you... Well, that's what you train for. Exactly. It's almost like being a, an athlete and training and training and training, and then do you ever get in the big game? Right. Exactly. Like well, that. yeah. yeah, that's and, true. And I, true. I know what you well mean. It may, not be, it may not be something that someone outside the fire service would quite understand. No, no they, they probably really don't. And, you know, uh, you, you go into a burning building when everyone else is going out, you know, that, that's something wrong with you then. Yeah. I don't know a firefighter that wishes for a fire, no, you know, no, and the things that, that come with, uh, with, with the bad things that come with right. that for somebody. Right. There, there's something right. bad's happening to someone. However, it is an opportunity to go out and, and you know, use the skills that you've learned, right. over, you know, you've learned over a career. Absolutely. That's what you train for. Mm -hmm. You train every day for that type of thing. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's other there's other runs that have definitely been in my in my on my mind, and, and you know, you can remember to the second what happened, you know auto accidents. Um, I remember a lady handing me her baby, probably about a six month old child, and I don't think the baby was breathing and it finally gasped once. And it's like, you know, it was one of those situations It was, you know, pretty hectic at the time, but um, you know, the, the child, you know, it's just one of the scariest times in your whole life and someone hands you their child and, mm -hmm. and, and it, it, you, you do what you, you were trained to do. And, and, it, and it worked out well at the end. But uh, probably the, the one that probably lives in my mind <laughs> more so than any, any, any run, any time ever happened, was the, the day that um, my brother passed. And Bob was a firefighter like myself. He'd retired or his other job got in the way of he couldn't do both jobs, so he had quit a, a year and a half previous. And he had a cardiac arrest. And you know, you, you think about that, and I was working that night and my station should have responded to his house. And believe it or not, a minute or two before his call came into his house, we made another run. You know, the, you know, if you say the Lord works in mysterious ways and he didn't want me there at the scene in my brother's house, that's the only thing I can believe today is that, but you know, like I say, you know, I was a firefighter. I could have very well have been there at his house and my crew working on, on my, bro my own brother who, who passed. But, um, that is probably the, the thing that just sticks in my mind the most, you know, and you know, you question yourself, if we were there first, could have made a difference, you know, but you know, it, it's, it is what it is today. But, and, and uh, I knew Bob, right. you know, and, and he's one of those guys that seems to, when you talk about those days back in, the, in those early days of our careers in the fire mm -hmm. service, he's one of those guys that's, I'm, seems to stand out larger than life. He had a big personality. That's right. And still to this day, when we have firefighter gatherings, he's one of the names that always comes up. Yeah. 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 So you've talked a little bit about runs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is there anything you know, that you haven't gotten to do here that you always thought you might do uh, in your career as a firefighter? What haven't you gotten to do? Well, you know, one of those things that I kept telling my family, I can't retire, I can't retire until I deliver a baby. And I might have to stay around for another 40 years for that to happen, but I think I might be a little bit too old to do the job at that point in time. Okay. But we've come close. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been there, got there right after the baby was born, mm -hmm. and we got there to the hospital right, right uh, prior to the baby being born. So, so it, it kind of goes both ways, so I think I have to give up on that, uh, that dream. But, um, you know, it, it is what it is. And, 
The other thing is what probably not many people know in the whole department is, keep in mind, I've been doing this for almost 41 years, I've never, ever pumped a structure fire. You've never ever. been the, the, the pump operator uh, pump on operator. a structure yeah, fire. Yeah, and, it, and it's like 40 years, you would think you could catch one, but yeah. never happened, so. You know what? Luck of the draw, I guess. Uh, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It was, you know, you know, I wish I had the opportunity, but yeah. maybe maybe I'll catch a run here in my last couple shifts. You never know. So we've talked a little bit about you being the final part-time firefighter that started as a volunteer. You realize that there are only four full-time employees that started as volunteers. you got the chief, the assistant chief, the captain, and a lieutenant. That's it. That, that puts you in pretty elite company. Yeah. Enough said there, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what do you it, think about that? Oh, I mean, it, it's just... You know, even guys that, that were paid for a career, you know, you, you had another career besides this. Absolutely. So, you know, th those guys were paid to be here. And, you know, uh, y you might think that, okay, if I don't have to run out to another job, you know, from eight to five during the day and then come home and this is my nighttime job, no, that is their job, right. but there's still, there's only four left. Well, you, you know what, for me, it's about a passion for the job. Yeah. It's my passion. Yeah. I love this job. Yeah. I, will, I, will, I will say that today I walk out this door. It's one of the toughest things I ever had to do. Yeah. Just walk away. You know, it's, um, you know, it's difficult. It really is. You know, if you start counting, count my time, I've been doing this two thirds of my life, mm -hmm. you know, and and I love it. I still do. And I'll tell you and I'll tell anyone I ever, if I ever talk about the fire service, it's the world's greatest job. Absolutely. By, bar none, it is the world's greatest job. I don't think anybody in the fire service would disagree with that. You know, look what you do for people. You know what? You know, you, you help people, you know? You know, you, you do what you need. You do what you do for the better of, of humanity. You really do. Well so, put. Well yeah. said. So finally, is there anything that you want your brothers and sisters on the department to know as you, as you go, some parting wisdom? Well, my wisdom would be is keep your confidence, keep training. Train, 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 train. And I, I can't emphasize that more. That, that just makes you better, keeps your confidence level high. You know, that, that's one of the things that, you know, that at, at, at 60 years old, you know, you might, you start thinking that you kind of maybe know more than maybe you really do know. But it's, um, you know, my, my, my school has always been school kind of hard knocks. You know, I go with my time in, you know, but, you know, you really have to train. I mean, that, that's, the, that's the key to being successful and being a professional department and, and doing the job the best of your abilities. But, um, you know, that's, be proud of it. Be proud of your service. Be proud and be, be proud of them that you are a member of Green Township Fire Department. And that's, um, you know, I've been proud of that ever since the day I got on when it was the MAC days and, and now, of course, with Green Township Fire and EMS. I'm a very proud person. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm very proud of my service. I'm very proud of what I do and what I've done in the past. But um, that's, that's one thing I, I will say is, is I'm proud. Take I'm pride proud. in your work. Pride in your work, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well said, yeah, yeah. yeah. as well. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's, um, you know, and it goes by fast, you know, enjoy the ride. My ride's over. It really is. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dearly miss it. I'll miss you guys and gals now. But that's one of the things that, um, you know, it, it, every, well, I work two or three nights, four nights a week at times. But it's, it's something that I always thoroughly enjoyed coming to work to be with the guys and the, and, the, and, and the few women we have on the department, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been great. It really has. So. Okay. But. So now that's the, that's what you would say to mm -hmm. people within the department, right. but you know, this department provides a service to 60,000 residents mm -hmm. and countless businesses. Right. You know, we, the department does emergency runs. That's what we dwell a lot on, right. but there's also non-emergency things that we do in normal times when we're not dealing with a pandemic um, you know there's you know business inspections 
car seat installations, CPR classes, lots and lots of stuff. What would you want people from outside the department, you know, in Green Township to know, business owners and residents, what do you want them to know about this department? This is the, one of the most professional departments in the Cincinnati area, bar none. We're here, at, we're here for a reason. We're here to make runs when we need to make runs, but we also have to do fire inspections to prevent fires. We, we do CPR to be able to help the community at large if, if some of their relatives or friends or neighbor would happen to need medical help or you know, in cardiac arrest situations. We're here, for, we're here for the community at large. You know, these guys that, that make runs on you are, are some of the best that there are. And you know, be proud of them. And, you know, you know it's, a, it, it's, been, it's been a, you know, the other guys that, um, you know, they have the same passion that I've had for all these years for, the, for doing the same job. So they're, they're here for Good. you. So. Good. So, you know, with that being said, to close things out, you and I got on the department, not at exactly the same mm -hmm. time, but, you know, you're one of those guys that, you know, in the fire service, you know, from when I started, I actually started after you, mm -hmm. you know, I was a year or so younger than you, and um, you're one of those guys that's always been there. Even, I think, when I came in the door as a cadet in 1977, 78, so, you know, there were a lot of guys our rough age, right. within a year or two, uh, it was a very large group that came into mm -hmm. the volunteer fire mm -hmm. department, especially at the Monfort Heights station. That's correct. And you were one of the guys that was always there, you know, from, from day one of my career to till I retired in, in 2017, you were always there. And you were one of those guys that I knew when I was working with you that I could depend on you to do whatever needed to be done. You, you knew what needed to be done and you would do the right thing at the right time and you know we served with a lot of guys that had those same traits mm -hmm. and it's been you know like you i appreciate every minute of that career and um, i'm glad to be able to still be doing some, a few things like this to help out so with that i'm going to say congratulations on your retirement and um you know there are other things out there really <laughs> you'll, yeah absolutely huh. you'll you'll find some of those I hope. Oh, yeah, well, I, I got my plans. Right. Well, well, thanks, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. It's been, it's been a great ride. I've loved every minute of it, most of the time. Not, not, <laughs> not three runs after midnight, but you know what? It's been a great ride for the most part. And, you know, I love the job. And I, I will say it again. It's the world's greatest job. It really is. Thanks. That's Mike Cleaner. As I said earlier, Mike is the final part-time firefighter to leave the department after starting as a volunteer. His well-deserved retirement is another moment in the long history of the fire service in Green Township since the Mac Volunteer Fire Department was formed in 1944. We certainly wish Mike Cleaner well in the future. While this is just the latest of many changes in history-making events, one thing that never changes is the dedication of the men and women of this department to serving the community and its residents. Reporting from Green Township, I'm Mike Nye.